Hi, LA Progressive friends and family readers and viewers. Uh, today, I am pleased to let you know that I am having an interview with someone sitting right here with me. His name is George Turner, and he is running for Superior Court seat number 48? 39. 39. Glad he's right here. So George is going to spend about 15 minutes telling you, uh, he's already shared this with me, and I'm quite convinced, why he should be the next judge to sit in seat number 39 for the Los Angeles Superior Court. So, George, tell us a little bit about your background. Absolutely. So, I'm born and raised in the city of Inglewood. Um, I went to public school my entire formal education, including all the way up into law school. Um, I graduated from uh, Morningside High School, um, valedictorian, then went on to UCLA, where um, I studied race, class, and gender. Um, graduated uh, summa cum laude and Phi Beta Kappa. And then I went on to UCLA Law School and my concentration was critical race studies. Um, I was able to study under some of the, the founders of the of, of critical race studies, including Kimberly Crenshaw and Cheryl Harris. Man, that's, those are some heavyweights. So I'm, I'm glad that you have really a, a solid foundation Excellent foundation, um, certainly um, a long um, experience in the public school system, which, you know, we wholeheartedly support. Talk to us about what you did after graduating from law school. Absolutely. So uh, after I graduated from law school, um, I decided that I wanted to become a public defender. Um, I'm someone who grew up during the era that the, the heath of mass incarceration. Um, what I tell folks is over the last half century, um, the state of California has built 23 prisons mm -hmm. and only three colleges. Isn't that amazing? Um, and so I wanted to be a part of the fight to sort of end mass incarceration. I wanted to do it on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's why I went into the courtroom as a public defender. Been there for the last 16 years, first as a paralegal, then as an attorney. Worked at airport court, the Inglewood court, the Compton court, the Central court, and the juvenile court. Um, fighting cases, whether they be misdemeanors, felonies, uh, juvenile petitions. Um, and currently, I am the deputy in charge of the homeless mobile unit. What we do specifically is try to, um, we try to clear the records of our unhoused neighbors, a oh, variety of different legal items, including expungements, um, including ceilings, including vacatures, and any other thing we can do to sort of clear up the records to in the barrier uh, to getting housing and jobs from some of the failed background check. Yeah, yeah, that's it's amazing. I mean, you really have to have a calling to do the kind of work that you do. I'm assuming that because you are from Southern California and you did go, come up through the public school system, in the work that you do, Mike, you might come across people that you knew growing up. Uh, absolutely. Um, so I am deeply ingrained in my own community, um, born and raised in Inglewood and working in the Inglewood Courthouse and the Compton Courthouse, which is really close. There are oftentimes that I would run into people who I knew in lockup. Um, there were people I knew who were in court, walked into courtrooms and knew the jurors uh, or prospective jurors. Um, I've even gone through police reports and seen uh, friends from high school and elementary school in six packs. Um, so, yeah. And, and for those who don't know what six packs are. Absolutely. So a six pack is when uh, police officers uh, take photos of people who were accused of crimes, mm -hmm. place them in a place them in a order on a piece of paper, and then try to get um, witnesses to identify to me, to me against them. I see. And so, you know, they're, they're interesting experiences because, you know, sometimes pick, people pick the wrong individuals. Um, there's certain legal ramifications or legal requirements to make sure that there's no suggestibility. There's nothing like looking at a police report of a six pack and you seeing like, oh, that's somebody who I went to elementary school with, mm -hmm. or I hope they're not, they weren't picked, or mm -hmm. somebody I went to high school with, I hope they're not picked. Right. So what really gets me excited about knowing that someone who's actually from the community, the community that has um, overwhelmingly been, I, I would say, overrepresented in our um, legal system and not on the good side of the legal system. It's nice to know that you can look at some of these people and not see them as monsters. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm somebody who um, 
I be, being from the community, uh, one of the things that I tell folks is, is that I, I I understand and uh, that crime is a serious thing. You know that people people some people uh, are serious victims of things. Mm -hmm. You know I've been robbed at gunpoint. That's one of my earliest memories. Actually, mm -hmm. somebody put a gun in my face as a child and asked my mom for her purse. Um, but I've also been stopped by the police on average once a month since I was 16 years old. Um, so what I what I tell folks is is that this sort of distinction between a uh, victim and an defendant communities it doesn't often work right because today's victim is tomorrow's defendant right so we need to find better ways in order to, to better ways to identify and um work with people too often circumstances are the reason why people come in up into courtrooms not because of who they are as people circumstances and so being able to change circumstances is very key and, I, and I'd also add to that, that part of the reason why I'm running for judge is people are like, well, if you're so, so much an advocate for uh, folks who are in your community, why would you want to sit in judgment of them? Um, the law has changed so much. Um, folks who are part of various coalitions have done a lot to change the law away from some of these sort of progressive policies, you know, whether it be Prop 47 or Prop 57 or Measure J or Measure H or the Humphrey decision. There are all of these different laws that have changed. When you go into the average courtroom, things haven't changed, mm -hmm. right? And so part of the reason why I'm running is because I want to make those laws real. I want to apply those laws. Otherwise, all that work and all that activism and all of the, the legislation that we've created, it won't be real. It won't come to fruition. So um, I think this is, a, this is a very key time and a key opportunity and I think that I am uh, uniquely qualified to sort of make make these changes real. Absolutely. Now, um, obviously, I'm the publisher of the LA Progressive. I'm not working in the legal field, um, but the LA Progressive has um, less, uh, like four years ago, we endorsed George Gosco mm -hmm. um, as district attorney. <clears throat> Los Angeles County District Attorney, and we recently interviewed him. And I think that a key component to having a, a um, type of, of justice system that, does, that isn't as punitive as it has been, one of the key components is all of the players need to have a similar look. So I'm sure that you, you're aware of George Gascon, and I think that what some of the challenges that he's experienced is because not everybody wants to play in the same in the same way. Absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, let's be completely honest. Um, uh, mass incarceration didn't happen because of a handful of people. It happened because a lot of people were working in, in one direction, sort of fear mongering, the sort of dehumanization of members of the community. And it became normalized. Um, and now we're in a very different era, you know, uh, you know, it's that, that story that people say that um, they base uh, the number of children being built on third grade and third grade test scores. Well, guess what? I was one of those third graders. Mm -hmm. But now I'm an adult I come from a generation of people who says enough is enough. It didn't work. Right. And the, the numbers also uh, bear that out. We certainly can't afford to continue to incarcerate people at the, at the level and rate that we do um you know the goal is not to have customers, if you will in the courtroom so what's this thousandism and, and what is it that doesn't seem to be for the station point yeah it's very frustrating very frustrating and, and you know what's what's interesting is is that um for those of us who are on the ground that is the only discussion point Right is being able to fight to argue with folks um, and convince folks that hey we need to change a person's circumstances. So what do I mean by that? If someone is mentally ill, which the many many of my clients are mentally ill, if someone is unhoused, many of my clients or all of my clients at this point, but you know, throughout my career, many of my clients were unhoused. Can we change those circumstances? Can we get them housing? Can we get them counseling? Can we get them resources? Can we get them options other than the options that were presented to them that created the situation that brought them before us? You know, the goal is that when someone, you know, in 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 my in my dreamland, in my dream world, the courtroom is a place of healing, a place where people are, are are come to made whole, come to be made whole, and a place where the community can have its voice heard. 
in, in you know in my in my deepest wish that's what i like the courtroom to be Absolutely. and so being able to get there oh. it requires that you have actors throughout the courtroom whether they be prosecutors defense attorneys but also judges who are aware of the community's needs are also aware of and work with the community's resources and bring those two together um and so you know that's part of the reason why i'm running i mean there's a host of reasons why i'm running but that's one of the major reasons that i'm running is because I kind of stand at the intersection of all of those things, if you will. And uh, I want to bring them together. I want you to bring them together too. Well, LA Progressive, I'm hoping that you're as excited as I am that a person like George Turner is going to be on the ballot uh, for the Los Angeles County Superior Court, seat number 39. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can vote before March 5th, but March 5th is the final day. I believe that the ballots would be mailed out on, uh, I think, February 5th. So you have a month, uh, but you will see George Turner, and we are really encouraging you to support George Turner and also to support the Defenders for Justice, which is how I got to know George Turner. That organization does a lot of vetting. And by the way, George, as a uh, public uh, defender, you are a rarity. Uh, to run for judge. Can you, can you talk just a little bit about the history of, of um, your superior court and, and how many public defenders become judges? So, you know, it's very, first of all, um, the system to become a judge is, is sort of cloaked in a sort of certain amount of mystery, right? A handful of people who are, some people are appointed um, and, you know, you have to know the governor basically and go through the entire process to be appointed. There's also a group of people who are, who run, who run, who run um, go through the democratic process. Unfortunately, if you look at the history of running the campaigns for judge, the overwhelming majority of people are either prosecutors or individuals who come from a different law background. In fact, the last election was the first time that a public defender was ever elected to be um, uh, judge. So we're we're really breaking ground here and trying to normalize having people who come from backgrounds that are unique um, to the bench being able to uh, become um, bench officers. And it's ironic when you consider the fact that public defenders are now, you know, they are literally a huge part of the criminal justice system. You know, most almost all courtrooms have one or two or three or multiple public defenders. Um, to have the first public defender ever elected just, just a few years ago is, is is wild. So part of the reason why the Defenders of Justice as an organization is, is so important is to sort of demystify the process to the community and to bring forth candidates who, who can actually sort of have real change. Awesome. Well, we're going to conclude this uh, chat. Um, this is Sharon Kyle of the LA Progressive, thanking you for joining us and for sitting down and listening to George Turner, seat number 39, Los Angeles Superior Court. Please vote on or before March 5th. So long. Thank you for sticking around. If you like the LA Progressive content and the discussions we have here, please consider clicking the subscribe button below and also give us a thumbs up. That helps to grow our audience by feeding the algorithm which helps to get this content in front of more eyes. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate your support.